point of care elastography intraoperative. So sometimes in uh, our life as anesthesiologists, we we get this kind of case intraop, and most of the time what we do is uh, we try to resuscitate, we try to correct the problem as much as we could. So obviously bleeding, when we talk about bleeding, we have surgical bleed and medical bleed. So the surgeon will concentrate on getting the bleeder uh, hemostasis and also we as anesthesiologists, we will uh, concentrate our work on the resuscitate and, and correct the medical bleed. So what usually, what are the options that we have? Uh, most of the time we go towards to the fixed uh, ratio massive transfusion protocol or we can also use a diagnostic test guided transfusion protocol. Okay, uh, MTP, the advantages of MTP, it is rapidly available, easily protocolized. Uh, the, the ratio, we just follow the ratio and we don't have to think about the uh, looking at the results and everything. We can just focus on our uh, job in managing the trauma. Relatively low cost, and the most important thing is uh, all of us are familiar with this technique. But there are some problems with the MTP as well. The exact ratio usually is a still a matter of debate. A different center has a different protocol. And uh, they don't take into account the possibility of fibrinolysis. Uh, and it may lead due to the empirical therapy. So it may lead to under or over transmission of the blood products. And um, bear in mind, blood and blood products are very precious and the demand is often excess of the supply. Okay, and on top of that, as we all know, there are a lot of uh, complications related to the uh, over, I mean, uh, transmission of the blood and the blood product as well. Next, what else we can do? We can use the diagnosis test, guided transfusion protocol. Uh, we have two options here. Number one is we use the conventional coagulation test, CCTs, or we can use a viscoelastic point of care co of coagulation, uh, VEPOCTs. So what are the difference? Um, comparing to the viscoelastic test, usually it's more rapid, less than 30 minutes compared to conventional, slower, more than one hour because if you take into account the transit time of sending the sample, etc. Viscoelastic is more expensive compared to conventional uh, and the viscoelastic test is a qualitative test we, we perform on the whole blood compared to conventional where we actually perform on the plasma is more towards quantitative test uh, we can detect hyperfibrinolysis in the viscoelastic and the conventional we can't really uh, know the, the, this condition and uh, one device can evaluate all the factors platelet and fibrinogen comparing the uh, conventional where we need a multiple device to get the results uh, and uh, the most one of the most important thing as well is the viscoelastic we can actually measure the clot strength Whereas the conventional, we just measure the clot initiation only. Okay, so um, comparing to what are the guidelines say from the NICE guideline, they recommend using the viscoelastic test during the cardiac surgery, but it's not really recommended in the trauma or PPH obstetric bleeding due to the inadequate evidence. The American Society of Anesthesiologists uh, says that uh, tag or rotem guided algorithm reduce the blood transfusion requirement in the presence of coagulopathy but there's no preference either to use CCT or VE POCT on managing platelet transfusion. European Association of Cardi Cardiothoracic Surgery and Cardiothoracic Anesthesiology they don't recommend uh, the use of VE POCT to predict bleeding in the patient who are not uh, on any antithrombotic treatment but they agree that by using this uh, protocol it can reduce the number of transfusion. The Society of Cardiovascular Anesthesiologists recommend VEVCT monitor to guide uh, hemostatic intervention uh, and they suggest uh, that 
pro-tem or tech-guided intervention reduce the transmission associated adverse events uh, in conclusion there's no uh, it's still unclear whether the viscoelastic test did to the reduce overall mortality and mobility and there's no guideline strong guideline that favor the use of VEPOCT over CCTs but there is definitely a role of VEPOCTs in selective high risk cases okay so for the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes i will just to focus on um, how we can actually uh, read and use this diagnostic tool in our daily daily uh, activity so when we talk about this VEPOCT why we don't use it mainly there are three problems uh, the evidence as we discussed earlier there's no clear evidence number two the I think the most important one is the cost is expensive the machine is expensive the test is also expensive number three is the familiarity uh, most of us we don't use so we we don't we are not familiar with the numbers and how to intervene how to interpret and intervene so we are quite lucky in our center we have this machine for the past i think a year plus so we have uh, some sort of experience um, mainly we use rotem we don't have tech so in the next uh, slides i will just try to bring you all try to explain how to remember things when we see all these uh, the results okay what is viscoelastic test you just imagine there's a cup of blood with a pin inside the cup okay is the pin will stay inside the cup and won't move the is either the pin will be rotated or the cup will be rotated so the pin will just stay until the clot is initiated when the clot is initiated the blood is, the viscosity is higher then the pin will start to move a bit so what happened after the pin move there's a detector detector that sends the movement and it will translate into the amplitude of the movement okay then we go into this uh, i think the graph that we always see remember and forget so um, x-axis is the time y-axis is the amplitude is basically amplitudes against time and there are a lot of uh, parameters on the graph uh, a lot of things to remember but uh, at the end of the day we just have to remember few few parameters so i prefer to look at this diagram look diagram we just focus on uh, number one is the ct okay and then number two is the mcf and number three is the ml it's not shown here but i will explain in a while okay the ct is is the time taken from the the time we put the blood in the machine until the clot is initiated okay that is clotting time in rotem and r time in tech so this time uh, what actually affect the clotting time is basically the coagulation factors so when we have a coagulation factors deficiencies due to the bleeding or anticoagulant or heparin so the ct will be prolonged okay number two is the mcf you see at the center mcf in the rotem and ma in the tag so basically is the maximum amplitude the uh, represent the strength of the clot so this what affect the mcf or ma is basically the fibrinogen or the platelet okay the problem here when we use the vepoct is a point of care so we want to actually get the results as fast as possible but if you look at the time uh, at the x, x axis basically to get into the mcf we need about 20 to 30 minutes to get the results so it defeat the purpose a bit so we can actually look at the amplitude at 5 minutes and amplitude at 10 minutes to predict the MCF. So instead of looking at the MCF, we just look at the A5 or A10 and then we can decide whether the patient require platelet or fibrinogen. Okay, the last one is the lysis. So from the maximum amplitude, normally 
the amplitude will just maintain until the end of the test. But if the clot is not stable, hyperfibrinolysis occurs. So the 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 amplitude will go down and will be reduced. If it is reduced more than 15%, then we can diagnose that the the patient is in the hyperfibrinolysis state. Okay, so uh, the next, I'm just going to show you the normal uh, results. We have few tests in one cartridge. In one big test, we have few tests that is important for us to differentiate on what, because at the end of the day, the test should guide us whether to give FFP, cryoprecipitate or platelet. Okay, just focus on the top left, it's the x stem x stem and on the right is the in -tem. Okay, So x stem is uh, represent the extrinsic pathway. So and the in -tem, intrinsic pathway. So what they, they, we, we actually put in the x stem we, is we put the tissue factors to trigger the coagulation. Okay, in the in -tem, we put an elagic acid to trigger the coagulation. So the difference between x stem and in -tem, basically the x stem is not sensitive sensitive to heparin, in time is sensitive to heparin. So if we use heparin, for example, in cardiac surgery, we have to look into in time rather than x -tem. Okay, and then below x -tem is a fib -tem. fib -tem, uh, basically is x -tem, the same blood, we put tissue factors, so it's x -tem, and then we add antiplatelet, cytokalizin D, into the, into the sample. When we put antiplatelet, the whatever results that is shown in the fit them is solely based on the fibrinogen. There's no fact, there's no platelet affect the results. That's why you can see the amplitude in the fit them is much lower than the X stem. So okay. So we by using X stem and fit them, we can differentiate whether we want we need to give either platelet or fibrinogen. We will go through it in a while. The fourth one is the up -tem. Up time is also the X stem where the same blood we put the tissue factors and also we put anti fibrinolytic drugs which is aprotinin. So when we put aprotinin, we remove the hypo uh, fibrinolysis and then we compare with the X stem, we can decide whether our patient need tranexamic acid or not. Okay, so to answer the first question, whether or not to give FFP. Okay, I, ho I hope we can uh, go through this together. Okay, uh, again, the clotting time is about the coagulation factors. Okay, so if you look at this X stem, you can see the CT is prolonged and the in time, the CT is prolonged as well. Fit time is prolonged. Hep time is prolonged as well. So when we see this kind of results, so what we do is we either give fresh frozen plasma or we can give uh, protombin complex. So uh, it's, uh, it depends on the indication uh, of of the bleeding. Okay. Uh, and uh, as I said earlier, heparin can also affect the CT. So in in this in this uh, example, you can see the X stem. CT is normal, in TEM, the CT is prolonged. Okay, so we know that uh, something is wrong with the in -tem. And then you can see the HEP TEM where we put a heparinase, we remove the heparin effect, the CT becomes normal. So in this case, instead of giving FFP or, or PCC, we should give protamine. Okay, next question is platelet. Platelet, we, we look at the X stem and also the fib stem. Okay, okay. Just look at the X stem. You can see the the A10 is actually low. Normal is about 40 to 60. In this case, is 23. Then we have to decide whether platelet or uh, cryoprecipitate. So we look at the fib stem. And when we look at the fib stem, the A10 is basically normal. So we know the fibrinogen level is adequate. So in this case, we need to give. Platelet. All right. The next question is cryoprecipitate. So uh, again, look at the X stem and the fib stem. You can see the A10 in the X stem is low, so we know something is wrong. 
and we look at the fit time fit time we can see the a10 is low as well so in this case the problem is a fibrinogen so we give fibrinogen the last one is a tranexamic acid whether we give uh, antifibrinolytic drugs or not so uh, okay uh, just pay attention on the the x tem in tem and the ap tem you can see from the maximum clot mcf of the x tem and in tem the the clot become unstable and you basically go into the baseline right but when we put a protein in, in the blood we can see the clot is stable so this is a, a classic classic picture of hyperfibrinolysis um, but if you want to wait until this the end of the test it will take about 30 to 60 minutes so there is a way to basically to uh, to predict hyperfibrinolysis we can compare the up tem and the x tem so if the clotting time the cft and the a time a10 is better when in the up tem comparing to the x tem we can actually start to give our antifibrinolytic drugs Okay, uh, so why we don't use this um, like like I, I explained earlier so it's the the cost we don't have the machine we don't have the, the it's not available in our center um, um, and also we are not familiar with the, the the test or the machine so when we have if maybe one day we will have this machine in our center in in malaysia in in uh, every hospital we have to think about these two points um, it's a it's a point of care so when it is a point of care you don't wait until the results to be completed before we see and interpret the results so we have to to act fast and uh, read fast and intervene fast so two things number one is the location of the machines so we don't put the machine in the lab we must put the machine in the clinical area where we use it we use it more often and number two we must have access to the results the results is dynamic so basically it starts from zero times zero to times 60 it is not a quantitative it's a qualitative uh, test so ideally for example in our center we have the 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 machine example in this room we can access the results in the other room using the live monitoring so we can basically wait until the a5 then we can diagnose our patient and we can treat our patient accordingly okay with that i end my speech thank you